Tip Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're taking a look at how to rig a very simple character face. This is basically going to introduce the uh, way that you rig and set up a joystick with uh, the plug-in joysticks and sliders for After Effects. Um, this is a very simple technique, but it can be used to create much more complicated things. I just like to keep it nice and simple for beginners. Um, so let's dive right in then. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create this face here um, and bind its features to a joystick so that when we move this joystick around, it moves between um, predetermined uh, keyframes, which you can then animate freely by just animating only the position of this white dot, uh, which is really, really useful. Uh, really simple and quick animation. It takes a little while to set up the rig, but then the animation actually takes a really short amount of time. So um, let's just dive right in. Then. Essentially, what you need to do is um, create your character with individual elements. So for example, if I click unbind here, you'll see that um, on each of our layers, I have five keyframes. Uh, now, these are just keyframes for um, position and rotation on each of our um, elements here. So I've got the base of the head, I've got the left eye, the right eye, the left eyebrow, the right eyebrow, uh, the stress marks, and the mouth. Now, the way uh, joysticks and sliders works is you set five keyframes, um, which are the extreme points of your uh, expression. So you've got your resting position, you've got far right, far left, up and down. And then you um, bind these to a joystick uh, and moving the joystick around positions those elements and generates the frames in between those uh, keyframes or those extremes. So um, let's just create something from scratch then. Um, if I set up a new composition, I'm not going to redraw the shapes again because you guys know how to draw shapes. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just copy those across, but we'll set up a new composition at 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second will do, and 20 seconds in duration. Um, you'll see that that doesn't really matter. Let's quickly pop in a background. Um, let's have, well, that green is fine, but maybe we'll do something a bit darker like that. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to copy across these elements like so. Um, just so that I don't have to draw them again, essentially. And what I'll do, so I know we're starting from scratch, is I'll just delete all those keyframes. Right, so what I'm left with is a series of shapes which have no animation and um, are just in a center pose, essentially. Um, the head, the eyes, the eyebrows, the stress marks, and the mouth. So the way joysticks and sliders works is you don't actually need to set this up until, the, until you're finished with your extremes. So we need to think about what elements, um, what features, sorry, we're actually going to want to animate. So we're going to want to obviously move the position. Uh, we're probably also going to want to move the rotation of some of these things. Um, and perhaps the scale as well, just so that we can um, choose to animate that if we want to. So simply create a keyframe for all of those. Um, and you have finished your first position. It's as simple as that. Um, this is the resting position that it's going to be when the joystick is at the center of its box. Um, so essentially there has to be only one frame between these, otherwise the joysticks and sliders gets confused. So the best way to do that is to select all your layers, press control right to move on one frame, and then there's a button here called paste origin. And what this does is it takes the keyframes from the first frame and puts them on your next one. And this is a good way to make sure that you're back at the center when you're positioning the rest. So for example, we want this to be far right. So when we move our joystick all the way to the right, what do we want our face to look like? Well, we probably want the um, eyes, eyebrows, stress mark and mouth. So everything except the base head. We probably want those to move over a bit when it's on the far right. Um, and honestly, I probably want them to rotate a bit. Now, the eyes don't need to rotate, that doesn't matter. Um, but the whole thing as a whole probably needs to rotate. So what we'll do to achieve that effect is we'll create a new null object. We'll go back to our first frame here and we'll animate the position and rotation of the null, like so. Um, and we'll move on one frame and we'll just paste that origin so we know it's the same there. Then we're going to take the mouth all the way down to the eyes, so basically everything except the base of the head, and we're going to pick whip that to the position of the null. And all this means is when I rotate the null, the face rotates as a whole, whereas if I rotate these individually, for example, they're going to animate by themselves. So this is our resting frame. All the way to the right then, we probably want our 
face to rotate ever so slightly, maybe seven degrees. Yep, that'll do. Um, and that will call our right position finished. So let's move on one frame. Select all of our layers again. Uh, I'll just give myself a bit of room so we don't have to keep moving. And we'll paste origin. And you can see it goes back to this first keyframe, not the one before it. So now we need to go all the way to the left. Um, so one, two, oops, don't want to have the head uh, selected on there. We just want everything but one, two. And we want to rotate this now by uh, negative seven degrees. Um, and that basically simulates everything that's over there, but on the left hand side instead. OK, um, now one last thing we probably want to do just because you can show you what kind of elements you can animate on uh, the base head, for example, we may want to also animate the um, gradient fill. So, for example, if I find my gradient fill here and I choose to create keyframes, my start and end point, I just need to make sure that when I add those keyframes, I clone them across to everything that we've done so far by pasting origin. OK, so we'll move back to our second one. So our resting pose is going to be the same. Our right hand pose, we're probably going to want um, the origin to move over to the right slightly. Um, let's just do it like that. And on our left hand pose, we're going to want the origin to move over to the left, like so. OK, um, so let's select all these layers again, move on one frame and paste origin. And now we have to do up. So it always goes in this order. It always goes right, left, up and down. Um, you can't do them in a different order. Otherwise, the joystick will be reversed. But obviously, if on the up um, keyframe, which is the fourth one, you actually position everything to the bottom, it'll still work. It'll just be when you move the joystick up, the face will actually go down. Now, that could be in some circumstances something that you want. Um, but for this, we don't. So we'll just do it properly. Um, let's select everything except the base of the head and move it all up. And what we'll also do is uh, increase maybe the scale of these eyes. See if he's uh, getting angrier. Like so. Uh, actually, we can just set them here. So we know they're both exactly the same size. And we'll just shift their position ever so slightly. Oops, not on the null. Um, just so that they don't overlap those eyebrows. Perfect. And maybe we'll push that mouth up a bit further as well. So he's getting really angry <laughs> like that. OK, and we'll increase the scale of the stress mark too by quite a bit because that's him getting rearing up to be angry. OK, um, and then we probably want the um, start end point, sorry, of the gradient to be pushed up ever so slightly because he's actually tilting his head back. So maybe the stress marks would be slightly higher and that'll do. Move on to the down frame, then select all your things, hit paste origin um, and then everything but the head we want to move down. Now I could just create a keyframe on the um, null to move position, but it's best to have keyframes on every frame, even if nothing changes. It basically stops um, joysticks and sliders from getting confused uh, between what should and shouldn't be moving. So set a keyframe even if nothing changes, essentially, and you should be nice and safe. So we'll push that further down. Uh, we'll actually push the eyebrows a bit further uh, onto the eyes and we'll push the mouth way up, maybe something like that. So he's grumpy. OK, uh, and then last of all, we will get the start point of our gradient and bring it way down so he's very angry like so okay so basically we've set now each keyframe for each position that we want we've got neutral we've got right we've got left we've got up and we've got down okay perfect so what we want to do now is select all of our layers and we want to bind all of these i'm just going to collapse them so it's easier to see we want to bind all of those keyframes to a joystick so essentially make sure that you've got all your layers selected and then you just hit create new joystick. OK, and we'll call this one angry face um, with correct capitalization. Um, and you'll see now that it goes through and picks all those keyframes and generates for us a joystick. Now, this joystick won't render. So you don't doesn't matter where you put it on screen because it's actually a guide layer. You can see here. Um, and that means that you, although you can see it when you're working, it doesn't actually render um, when you're finished. So you can see now that we just need to move this white square around and it goes through our four uh, keyframes. So you notice we only set left, right, up and down, but we've got this whole area to work with that generates the frames in between them. So top left is halfway between left and up, if that makes sense. So 
Although our left keyframe is stopping where we set the most extreme, if you move up to the top left corner, it blends halfway between up and left. You can see that the scale of that stress mark increases. So does the size of the eyes, etc. cetera. Um, that's really all there is to it. So let's just quickly show you how it works then. Um, if I just set a position keyframe on my angry face uh, adjuster and I move, say, 20 frames along and we want our face to move down and prepare to be angry. We want it to then uh, wait for 20 frames, shoot all the way to the top, and then come back down and then start shaking his head. Okay, so left, right, left, and right, and then we can just clone those keyframes so we don't have to keep doing that. Um, I'll just quickly use motion V2 to clone those, but copy and paste works just as well. And then we'll have it go back to our middle initial keyframe. Okay, let's crop that comp and let's select all those keyframes and just give them a quick bit of easing like so. And let's take a look. There you go, nice and angry face moving around. And you can see that it's directly linked to the position of that. So if I were to, I'd actually probably um, speed those up if it was me. So go, face would go down, he'd shoot up in anger much quicker, shoot back down much quicker, and shake his head around much quicker as well. Um, but this is essentially the animation part of it. So we've finished our rig, it doesn't matter. Um, too much. So there you go. Perfect. So that's really all there is to it. Um, I may do a separate tutorial for sliders because they get a bit more complicated, um, which is the second part of joysticks and sliders. But for now, all you need to know is that's how you set up a joystick, a nice and simple rig. Um, you can see that I've actually got a few more examples here. Um, I've got the original angry icon, happy icon and the laughing icon. Um, so if I just quickly go through those, this original angry one, if I hide that layer and here, you can see he's grumping and he gets a bit angry and wobbles his head about. Um, on the happy icon, you can see that he's sort of swinging his head in happiness, uh, nice and simple. And on the laugh out loud icon, you can see that he's actually got a teardrop that um, increases in scale as he laughs. Um, so it's really, really simple to do this. It's really, really useful. Um, but that's all there is to it. So I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Uh, and if you did, great. Make sure to leave a comment below um, or join us on our Discord channel, the link to which is also in the description. Um, and let us know what you made. Um, we'd love to see it. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. And I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.